Hi everyone, today I'm going to be working on EWA or Eagle Wood Arts Triceratop model. This is actually my second EWA model and I'm kind of excited to work on this one as I love these moving parts. So I love any of these wooden models that actually have gears that rotate and actually makes the model move. And uh, the, when I actually made this model at the end I was actually very surprised with the articulation of the legs because of the way that the uh, the muscles, like as you can say, of the body uh, were designed, it actually allows for this kind of like really nice movement of the legs when it moves. So um, I'm actually very excited to show you this model because I actually had a lot of fun building this one. What's interesting about this model is also includes a very, very miniature triceratop. Uh, it's like a baby triceratop that I guess almost acts as a fidget spinner also because they have a gear on top that you can kind of uh, fidget around and rotate around with. So it's kind of nice to have that little added bonus. One thing to note that they do give you this kind of card with a QR code in it and one of them is to show how to do the assembly so it will actually give you a link to a video that you can see kind of how to assemble and the other link is actually for if you have any broken parts or missing parts you can use that QR code to go to the website and actually request for the parts that you have broken or need replacement. Inside you're going to find the rubber bands and then a bag of toothpicks and some wax and a paper clip and uh, sandpaper. Um, I would actually say to throw out that paper clip because it's used to actually pull the rubber bands through the gears to connect them but I've had a lot of trouble with this the last time I used the EWA just because the paper clip is very narrow and actually hurts your fingers and it kind of is hard to fit it through the holes that you actually need something a little bit more uh, sturdier and actually a lot easier to use so um, I'm going to recommend it later but uh, if you have a zip tie or um, even better if you have any wire ties that are you will find on a bread packaging or even uh, when you buy some cables uh, they kind of give you those wire ties keep those because those will come in very handy when you're working on this model So I tried something new in this video of trying to use my uh, my saw for model making to see if I can cut the, uh, the toothpicks a little bit easier and uh, although it cuts pretty nicely it's actually more time consuming and it actually wasn't worth um, using. Um, it kind of flew everywhere too so what I actually ended up just doing was my old way method of doing it which was just using a, a, a cutter like a wire snipper to just kind of snip it off and then I would go over again with exacto knife very close to the surface and just kind of saw off the remaining piece that might be sticking out. Um, it's a lot faster to do it this way. Um, another method that you could use is actually using the exacto knife from the beginning and just kind of uh, score it halfway in and with your fingers you're able to actually snap off the remaining toothpick part and then go with the exacto knife and just kind of uh, clean it out afterwards. One thing about the EWA model is that a lot of the parts are going to fit very snug and this is actually not just the EWA thing but a lot of other um, wooden models too is that you're going to get a lot of these tight pieces because it's pretty much using friction to hold the pieces together and so sometimes it's going to be hard to really squeeze it in so what helps is actually using the wax or the candle that comes with the models which is typically included in any wooden model and so that you can kind of use it to lubricate the, the sides of the wood Wood, so that kind of is able to squeeze in a lot more easier. It doesn't seem like it will do much but actually a little bit of candle goes a long way um, especially when it's very tight and you're going to be seeing that a lot in this video especially because the uh, pieces that are holding the, uh, the other pieces in together 
are like these tabs that are triangular shape and for that reason it's actually going to have a, a, a little bit wider surface at the edge that you have to squeeze through so being able to kind of lubricate that edge really helps to squeeze it in and pack it in the wood uh, without any uh, resistance or friction and so uh, that's just a very good tip um, that I would want to share to make sure that you know you're not hurting your hands too much as you're trying to squeeze in all these pieces This was actually my f most favorite uh, part of this build was I really liked how they designed this tail because normally you would take out all the pieces from the sheet and then put them together one by one but in this case they actually thought of a way of being able to keep the tail on the sheet itself and then you start putting the connectors together and then they gave you these tool pieces uh, one is a little bit narrower and the other one's wider for you to wedge in between to hold it in place until you put the side plate on to kind of secure it in place at that point you can take out the tool and then uh, put the face on the other side of the tail and once you got all the connections in for the, the, the to connect the three tails um, you can actually remove the tail from the sheet as one piece and I just thought that was very ingenious and I kind of wish I saw that more with other uh, wooden models just because it makes it a lot easier to construct having everything kind of uh, staying in place So a lot of these gears that you're going to see are actually for the crank or the uh, handle that you're going to be turning to kind of wind up the gear. And so you want to make sure to lubricate these very well and thoroughly with the wax that's included. Um, especially because they're going to be uh, usually fit in between a lot of wood and you don't want that friction to slow it down or kind of stop the, the gears. Um, even a little bit of resistance will actually make it hard for the parts to move so you want to make sure to have it be very smooth by using sandpaper uh, to rough out any edges and then using the wax um, to kind of just lubricate and remove any friction that might cause uh, be caused between the woods.
So when you're putting these two smaller gears um, into the body, uh, there are actually these score marks uh, that are on the side of the gear that you want to make sure you're aligning with the bigger gear. And this is just so that you can align the, uh, the legs properly so that when they're rotating, it'll actually move in a consistent motion. And so when you're putting this together, just be sure to make sure that those lines are lining up. The bag comes with uh, multiple lengths of these wooden pegs and so what they did was they include one of the pieces as a measuring uh, tool so that you can use it to measure the lengths of the pegs so they can identify which pegs to put in at a certain location. The measuring tool actually has a side where it kind of has a little notch and it's actually used for this part here where you're putting the toothpick in but you're actually gonna be putting it up against that notch and so that when as you're pushing the toothpick through the side of the measuring tool will actually stop to let you know when to stop pushing the toothpick and it gives you the exact lengths that you need for you to be able to uh, put it in through the body later on. If you see in the middle of the hole there are these slots that are horizontal, be sure to make sure that um, those slots are actually lining up because if you don't, you're actually going to have to remove the, the faces again and actually realign them so to make sure that the, all the slots are uh, aligned because you're actually going to be putting in the rubber band gear through those slots later on.
So this part, you're gonna actually have one of the rubber bands, and you're actually gonna cut it in half on both ends so that you just have a half length of a linear piece of rubber band. That band is actually going to be put in through two separate holes um, on the body, as you're gonna see right here. And so one of them goes into the small hole, and the other one goes into the slot, but you're actually gonna be putting it on the slot um, past where that uh, little peg piece is and you're actually going to tie it as close as you can to the, the surface of the body to create a tension and so what this allows is for the uh, the lever piece to be in a tension so that it always snaps back in as you're rotating uh, as you're going to see here as I demonstrate how it snaps back in. As you can see here, as I'm pushing in this piece, the two uh, spinal pieces that were attached to that uh, bracing piece was actually being pushed down. So it was actually hard to get this other bracing piece in and aligned properly because it kept pushing the spine down. And so what I did that's not being shown on this video is I actually used a needle nose plier that's long enough to go in from the other side and push up on the spine against the backing so that it can kind of snap into place. This is another part that I really admired about the design for EWA was the legs. There's these three, uh, I guess, wooden pieces that are sticking out from part of the leg that's going to be connected later. But because of the way that these three, uh, I guess you can say tendons or muscles are put together, it actually allows for this kind of rotating freedom of movement for the legs as the gears rotate around. And I just thought it was a really great design because it kind of mimics how a muscle works with, you know, kind of if we're comparing it to like like let's say our arm is going to have the tricep and the bicep and it kind of acts uh, works together to kind of create this kind of circular motion as you're walking or as you're moving.
So this is the part that I dreaded the most and it's cause I've had so much trouble with this with my last uh, EWA model that I worked on and in this case this was the lessons learned so I actually ended up using a zip tie um, as is suggested by uh, Mike from at Play Toys and I actually what he told me was to use a bread tie but I heard it as a zip tie um, and though I had a smaller zip tie but I couldn't find it so I ended up using a bigger piece but the biggest piece came out to be difficult just because the head of the zip tie was a little bit bigger than the hole allowed for that had to kind of really squeeze in through the, the hole on the other side but if you have a smaller zip tie um, it might be able to work or as Mike suggested uh, it would be actually easy if you just use your bread tie and kind of tie it in on one end and just pull it through and after you get the rubber band through the t-shaped piece that is inside the gear and wrap around it you can actually remove the bread tie or the, the zip tie um, to have the rubber band be secured And here is the completed Triceratop and the baby Triceratop. And as you can see, we're going to be testing out the gears. And there's a latch on the other side to release the gear so they can start moving. Um, it kind of worked well for the moving, except that it kind of, uh, for some weird reason, just its own weight wasn't enough for it to kind of stop it from moving. So my guess is that some of the gears were still a little rough that might have to wax it down a little more. But overall, the gears and everything worked smoothly and actually a really fun build. And I really love some of the designs and details that went into this Triceratop model. And it's actually a lot more complex than I thought it would be in terms of design, which I think is a very great feature. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell or the notification if you want to get notified when I make new videos and I upload them.